So Charlie, we've got a question. Uh -huh. Do we dare take some of our extra money and invest in something right now because prices are so low? Yeah. Um, Shane has an itch to invest in the yeah. airlines, but yeah. that feels like wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, what do you think? What would you do? Well, Shane's not the only one. I mean, man, it's amazing to see these, you know, companies that just in January were on fire. And now here we are talking about, are these companies going to declare bankruptcy? I mean, I, I hope no airline had to do that, but you know, that's the, one of the things that we got to think about. And Kevin and I are not uh, fans of individual stocks mm -hmm. um, because of that reason. We just don't know, especially in this time right now, the airlines will survive, but that doesn't mean a company won't declare bankruptcy and then your investment go to zero. So that's the risk with individual stocks. Now, Lisa, what you know, you and I talked about was, well, hey, but how about we buy a basket of stocks? Yeah. So uh, an ETF, exchange traded fund that has that you can even specialize in airline stocks. I don't know that I would even do that just yet. Um, but I think the one point I'll make, and then Kevin, I'll hand it off to you, was you know, Lisa, you and I talked about, hey, this X amount of money that you have. What if we did put it in this uh, airline ETF? And what if it doubled, even tripled? You know, how would that change your life and, and would it change the trajectory of your retirement or would it make you happy? Or what if you took that X amount of money and you said, all right, let's um, let's do something. Hold on to this as an emergency fund. Um, I know you already have one. I know your balance sheet is better than anybody's I know. But anyway, uh, you know, what other things could we do with this that could also change our lives or make us feel better? So those are kind of the ways that I think about it. That's very non-scientific. But I just think a lot of times when we're scratching the itch, it's not going to be a game changer in the big picture unless we just took everything we had, put it all on black, so to speak, and maybe we'll get lucky. But that's not investing. That's not what we do. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So that's, that's, we go to Vegas for that kind of stuff. But Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, well, I'll even be less scientific here because I think, um, you know, this is a visceral, visceral reaction that many people have when they see the markets go down. Uh, the first they say, oh my gosh, my investments are worth less. And then they start thinking about maybe I should buy. And uh, when, you th when you're thinking that you should buy, it's really trying to gain some control mm -hmm. over a situation that you don't feel good about. Because you're saying, these companies have gone down, I want to buy. I want to have some control. I want to be smart here. I want to invest. And so I, I do caution people as well that, look, if you have money that's available to invest for the next 10 years, by all means, buy. And, uh, you know, we always think it's a good time to buy. Now it's a particularly good time if you have a 10-year time horizon. But when it comes to taking cash and putting it in the market uh, and going all in, or, or like Charlie said, betting on red or black, I, I don't think that's the way to think about it. But I do think it's a good idea to buy companies when they're lower. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I found a lot of value in Charlie's answer in compare the difference in what what value will you derive personally from taking the risk and investing the money mm -hmm. versus holding on to it in this time of uncertainty i think particularly if you don't have an emergency fund you need to hold on to that cash yeah. <laughs> so that's right yeah. absolutely keep yeah. that in mind as well yeah and, and i don't think there's anything wrong with scratching the itch so to speak like you'd said kevin it's just that you got to make sure hey it's not money that you know you need to have for some other purposes because you could lose that money. Absolutely. And I remember having a conversation about American airlines and with another pilot, they said American will never go out of business or declare bankruptcy because they have so many, you know, all the holdings that they have. I don't even know what that was 10 years ago, but then they declared bankruptcy and, and whoever, you know, your investment goes to zero. And so that's the, that's the tough part about it. Yeah, and I do think uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy something, as Charlie said, buy, buy a fund. You can actually see what are the top ten holdings in a fund, and it's 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 actually more exciting to go ahead and buy a fund when you see which companies you're buying, like Amazon and Google, and um, you know, and 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 there might be an airline. It might not be in the top ten anymore, but uh, there are uh, great companies that are in these funds. So if you want to buy something, let's take a look at the companies that are in that fund. Mm -hmm.